We traveled all the way from Florida to Guatemala with a precious cargo of epoxy and paint for fixing up some of our boat problems. We were still also reeling from the experience of having a destructive energy suddenly eject down from the sky into our boat and reach into some of our electronics, so we got on over to the nearby boatyard and started sanding. So if you're working on any boat or creative projects that require epoxy and paint, you can go to the link below this video to receive a discount off your next order with Toto Boat. The first material that we're going to test out is the epoxy fairing compound. This makes it quick and easy for us to fill in and smooth areas where usually I'd have to mix epoxy, two-part epoxy, and then mix in the right mixture of dry various compounds. Well now, this should just be one flat surface, one plate, one spatula. Mix one and one part. Avoid breathing the vapors. Wash hands after handling. Store away from heat and keep cool. Yeah, good luck doing that here. I cleaned the area that was sanded earlier with a solvent. This was entirely our first time using Total Boat Fairing Compound. Part A. Part B. Interesting. I realized quickly that I liked using a squeegee with a handle on it to mix the two parts. It's beautiful. I used the fairing compound in all the really shallow gouges that I made with the grinder. The cleanup is super easy also, I just had some solvent and a rag and wiped everything down. Working time is 15 to 60 min minutes. I think in the heat here, it's probably gonna be 15 minutes. It's more like 10 to 15 minutes. It's, it's the kind of product you don't have time to, to move the camera. But it was really easy to apply. It was way more quick than adding talc powder and anti-sag. I would have liked to have had this in Progresso when we were doing the thousand pock marks, osmosis marks all over the boat. Here we are one day later or overnight, we've let the epoxy set and it looks good, looks normal. What I'm used to, nice and hard, ready to sand. We'll see how it sands and then we've got to do more epoxying, some with filler today, some without filler. So we've got epoxy from Total Boat. We're going to use the rust converter on the rusty spots of the keel and then we're also going to see if we have to add more filler if I didn't make it flush enough. I wanted to use my Bosch variable speed grinder with a sanding pad, but the Total Boat fairing compound also sands very nicely and quickly with a random orbit sander, an 80 grit paper. Nice. 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 Smooth. Feels good. Feels dry. Feels hard. Some spots where I didn't get it exactly flush. Now we're going to do, this is metal, this is the metal of the keel, and we've got to go over that with some special paint, rust remover, rust prep, that Nick brought us over from his boat, because we don't need a ton of it, we just need a bit of it, and the Osfo costs about $50 per 800 milliliter here. Two thin coats, allowing no more than 20 minutes between coats, apply after the first coat turns black. We had to do our best to make sure that the rusty spots on the keel would not rust up and bubble out again through the fiberglass. So the rust neutralizer should stop that rust in its path and convert it into a usable and workable surface. We realized right away that a small cotton swab would have been perfect for this job. Now we've got our non-blushing uh, two-part epoxy from Total Boat. A non-blushing formula means that we will not need to remove the amine or blushing layer that can form on top of other epoxies once they've cured. In other words, this epoxy is super simple to use. We're going to apply fiberglass cloth and the epoxy. We're delaminated from the, the metal was rusting. Our, our keel is steel kind of out on the outside and lead on the inside. And the steel, if you tuned into our last boatyard videos, was all rusted. We uh, encapsulated the keel basically in fiberglass cloth. And we still had a bit of rust issues. The rust made some small marks in the keel. So we're going to try out this epoxy. 
The pumps are made specifically for each bottle. Dot on this one. We got instructions that come with the pump kit. We prime the pumps to get the air out. This one primed nicely without lifting the pump too much. You just. The first pump is never fully primed. Now the pumps were calibrated to divvy out the exact right amount of material. That's one, you go all the way down. Yeah. So I think you're gonna make two. And two. One. And two. While Robbie wetted out the fiberglass pieces on our plastic surface, I grabbed the pieces and applied them to the keel where necessary. This epoxy is very clear, so it's not easy to see on camera, but we stuck on about three layers of biaxial fiberglass cloth wherever needed. The fairing compound was then perfect for smoothing out the surface of the keel in preparation for the paint. Our deck also needed some fairing after removing all that anti-skid. This team is applying a flitting compound with a two-person job, but then just more feet walking on the clean. Which is less sweaty than I am, so. It's only a matter of minutes between full sunshine and pouring rain here. But also, luckily in the Guatemalan summer heat, the epoxy sets in minutes. We also had a dinghy project underway. I sanded all the old paint off, and we both agreed that we wanted to fiberglass most of the bottom. However, we disagreed on whether or not we should try to slap on all the cloth in one go. Hot five pumps. We quickly figured out that the fiberglass was too thick to be stuck on all at once. Also, the sun was much too harsh for this job to be done out in the open. But at least our big boat project was coming along. This has been kind of a challenging project here with rain that comes every, every single evening. I've removed some of our hatches. We've got leaky, ha every hatch on the boat leaks to some extent. This one was pretty bad when we're underway. We, if we get into some seawater washing up on the deck, it would come into this hatch very, very easily through here even though there's a fairly new gasket inside here. Yeah, this window, I removed it along with some others. And my plan is actually just to make a brand new, very simple, primitive hatch. Or I have the choice of trying to service this old hatch. We've got fiberglass, we've got epoxy. I might take that route. We dug out some scrap wood from our bilge and got to work building some new hatches. I learned from the dinghy fiasco that we have to work with smaller strips of fiberglass cloth if I want to create corners and curves. We don't have that fancy peel ply stuff, but plastic garbage bags work well to cover the work and weigh it all down with lead weights. It's 
new hatch is a little spiky. I don't really want to touch it with one hand. It's coming along nicely. We are stopping water from coming in. Drilled out these screw holes. This is where water was also coming in these windows. No more of that. I made two more hatches above the saloon and used the fairing compound to build up the shape and thickness of the hatches. I have to draw an arrow with yeah, a sharpie it needs on like it. Yeah, like an arrow or something. You have to write sport and starboard. With the new hatches keeping out a little more rainwater, I felt comfortable now to create more large open holes in our deck. These old port lights above the galley and the head let in lots of rainwater, and I was having enough of that. For this particular project, we brought with us from the US two perfectly sized pieces of scrap acrylic. How do we want this to fit on? Just a little hot. But the only thing about taking these windows out is a little bit of air is coming in. A little bit of a breeze. Ew. Yucky. These are all dead ants. Stuck under the wood. Nice, you know, decade-old cockroach. We traced the exact shape that we wanted into the plexiglass, or acrylic. Pen and the scratch left the clear. And then we brought it to a workshop to get help precisely cutting the window shape. Next, we grab some plywood from the nearby hardware store that delivers to the boatyard to make a frame that will hold the plexiglass. A centimeter thick. Because the plywood is not the highest quality, but it will remain inside the boat, we first wanted to prepare it by wetting it out with epoxy. Yes, perfect.
felt confident after dry fitting the frames that we could now epoxy it all into place. And of course, we would be fiberglassing all into place to make sure that it would be as strong as the rest of the deck and the boat in general. Squeeze out all, all around. Good. Wet it out. It's easier than applying epoxy to the wall. If I apply, if I apply the epoxy to the wall, it's just going to drip all over my head. So. With the usual afternoon rain, we would be so very happy when the port lights would finally be installed. <laughs> <laughs>